Hello, in this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Lean in CoCalc. Um, this will involve using the latest version of Lean and VS Code. And what we're going to do is just poke around um, at Kevin Buzzard's new FLT um, project. Okay, so here's what you do. First, go to the CoCalc landing page, cocalc.com. You can either open a new project click servers and then click create compute server, or you could just scroll down a little bit to the section about compute servers and in the template box, type in lean. Um, that finds a template for the lean theorem prover. So let's click on that. And then let's choose the project that we're going to use. I have a project called demo that I'm going to use. And when you click there, it will open that project and then let you finish configuring your compute server. And for this demo, I think I'm gonna change this slightly. Instead of using this machine that has only four CPUs, I'll use a machine with eight CPUs, TTD standard uh, eight. Okay, and I think I'll also choose the region to be closer geographically to me so that uh, things feel faster, there's lower latency. Okay, this compute server that I'm going to start up will cost seven cents per hour. It has eight CPUs and 32 gigabytes of memory. By the way, um, what we're going to get with this is very similar to what you get with GitHub code spaces. We'll have VS code running on a VM and we can easily clone things from GitHub. Um, the difference though is, or a difference is that this will be an order of magnitude better pricing than what you get with GitHub code spaces. This is six cents per hour, whereas if you look at GitHub code spaces pricing, for the same machine, it's 72 cents per hour, i.e. in CoCalc, it's 10 times better in pricing. The reason is because this is a spot instance, but even with a standard instance, it's still significantly better than GitHub code spaces. Um, as it, this is a spot instance, it can occasionally restart. This tends to happen once every few days, um, usually. So it's uh, perfectly fine in my experience, especially when you're using lean because you're really using it interactively. And if it happens to be that the server restarts and for one minute it isn't working every day or two, it's really not a big deal. Okay, so let's start our server running. Um, this is going to take about two minutes to start up. And as it starts, there'll be uh, various progress bars that move across. And when they're all at 100%, that's when you know it's fully started. Um, while it's starting, let me point out a few things about the configuration of this compute server. As I mentioned before, it's a spot instance. It's on Google Cloud, and it has the Lean Theorem Prover image. There are many, many other images available, and this one has Lean pre-installed and configured with Lake, which lets you manage the version of Lean easily for various projects, and also VS Code already set up. It's all the standard tools. Um, the other things to point out, I increased the disk from the minimum possible of 10 gigabytes up to 25 gigabytes so that there would be plenty of space to install um, Kevin's FLT project and the MathLib4 library. Um, the fast data directory right here, compute server 3720, that's really important. Uh, we're going to store our data only on the compute server because we want it, the data to be accessible really quickly and we want to be able to use up lots of disk space and we don't want everything to have to be synced back to the main CoCalc project. Um, the other things, in order to use VS Code, uh, things just tend to work a lot better involving the language server if you set a DNS subdomain. So we definitely set a DNS subdomain. Um, and automatically restart, that makes it so that when the compute server, it, the spot instance is preempted, so it gets killed due to maintenance or lack of resources, it will automatically restart on another machine in Google's data center. Okay, let's check on the status of our compute server. Uh, it's almost done, it's not quite finished. We started it 
around two minutes ago. See, it's almost done. By the way, as it's starting up, you can click Serial and watch the Serial console. It's like Linux as you see the uh, boot messages scroll by. Okay, it looks like it's now fully ready and um, set up and running. You can access your compute server and do various things on it via the file explorer, but for our purposes using Lean, we're going to do everything in VS Code. And to do that, we can either click this VS Code button right here or click the drop down menu and then click on VS Code. Either way, that will launch VS Code in another tab. So let me click it. Um, it just launched VS Code, the server is starting, it's checking to see if it's ready or not, and when it's ready, it will proxy it and then pop it up in another tab. And here it is. By the way, notice this little auth token thing in the URL. Uh, this authenticates me to use this instance of VS Code, so you don't have to type in some password here. If you take this URL and share it with somebody else, um, until you reset the auth token, which you can do in compute server settings, they will also be able to access this instance of VS Code. For example, let me make an incognito mode browser session and then paste in that same URL and let's see what happens. It's like a completely different user and they also have access to this browser or to this um, VS Code session. So if you set things up and then want to share them with somebody else, it's as easy as that. But they, of course, have right access to the same files. They're using the same instance of VS Code. Okay, so let's make a terminal. And then in the terminal, we're going to poke around a little bit. First, I'll type top just to confirm that our compute server looks powerful. I hit one, and that shows that there's eight different CPUs. And um, we have 32 gigabytes of memory. So it's a nice, powerful compute server. Also, I'm going to change into this compute server 3720 directory. Your server will be similar, but with a different number after that. This is very, very important. By changing into that directory, we're going to make sure that all of the files that we're using related to Lean are directly on the compute server and not in our main CoCalc project. We don't want them to be sitting on a network file system um, on a very small, like limited quota file system. The compute server has lots of space. Notice when I type df space dash h dot, it says that I have 18 gigabytes of disk space available. Incidentally, if you need more disk space on your compute server, it's really easy. Go back to your compute server, click on settings right here or right here, they're the same. Scroll down to where it has the persistent disk storage and you can change it. Let's say I change it from 25 to 50. Um, you just click the button, it will enlarge your disk and it will charge you that much more per month. So to go from 25 to 50 is an additional $1.30 per month. Okay, I just did that. When you go to your compute server, it won't be instantaneous, but there's no restart required or anything. And it usually takes about 30 seconds. Notice it's already enlarged the disk. Um, so we now have the full amount of space. Okay, so next I'm going to git clone the um, repo with Kevin Buzzard's FLT project, which uh, I have right here. I'm pasting it and it's uh, imperial github.com imperial college London FLT. Okay, I'm cloning it and it's done. And if we look, we'll see that we have this directory. Now we have this directory. What we're going to do is a very, very important step. And if you don't do this, you'll be suffering for hours waiting for, I don't know about hours, but for a long time waiting for Mathlib 4 to compile from scratch, which you definitely don't want to do. So you just have to paste one line of code in um, and it's documented. So the website to go to is right here and I'll have, the link is in the description, but um, it's extremely important to type lake exe cache git. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to VS Code and put that in the terminal inside of the FLT directory. This only takes a couple of seconds, but it's going to download 
you know, several gigabytes of data and give us all of Mathlib 4 and the correct version of Lean and everything um, properly configured and pre-built so that we don't have to wait forever for Mathlib 4 to compile. And then we'll be able to very quickly get going with browsing um, the latest version of the FLT stuff without having to wait forever to get feedback from Lean. And this is really, really fast. This only takes a few seconds because um, the network is extremely fast, the machine's fast. Um, and it's really, it's just a very nice experience. Okay, so just wait a bit. By the way, all these files I'm looking at in VS Code, as I mentioned before, you can also see them in the file explorer over here. Just switch your server to lean, to the one that you created, and then that gives you a file browser on the compute server. And you can see here are all the files we're looking at on the compute server. I mean, from VS Code. Okay, so in 47 seconds, it grabbed all of the files. And now we're really all set up and ready to go. So the last step is we're going to open, go to File, Open Folder, and we're going to open this FLT directory. So just browse to it. First, I'm going to click on Compute Server 3720, and then FLT, then click OK. And then the browser refreshes, and then we say that we trust this directory, and boom, here it is. And now if we look inside of the FLT subdirectory, we can see finally some math looking things, automorphic representations, basics, elliptic curves, um, Tate curve, group schemes. So let's click on basic for the first thing and then click on reductions.lean. Um, notice that the lean extension for VS Code is already installed. You don't have to mess with that. If you look at extensions, you'll see that it's already set up and installed, but you can install any other extensions that you like. Um, the syntax highlighting is all nice. Lean is actually running. Um, there's a little bit of loading and stuff, but um, it's like we're already seeing output. We're seeing messages. Oh, it says use the restart file command. So that's a little button that the Lean extension to VS Code puts right here. So let's click it. And I think that will help. Okay. And then notice building Mathlib. It said for just a second, 2011 of 2011. So it's extremely quick. And so here we are, it's working. Um, um, of course, not all of Fermat's theorem is you know, proved, but uh, we have all this stuff here. So this is great. And you can really just browse through any of this and get to work on helping Kevin prove Fermat's theorem. Notice you have all these different files. Um, so elliptic curves, torsion, and it's all just there and working nicely. Um, finally, if you find that things are you know, too slow, there are a couple of things you can do. It should be very, very fast and nice, but if it's a little too slow, like you feel like there's a little bit too much of time between you do some, when you do something and when you see the result, you can just uh, beef up your compute server. So go to servers, Click on edit or settings. And if you stop the server first, you can change the machine type to make it more powerful or less powerful, depending on uh, how much you want to spend. And you can also move the region. It's really good to select a region geographically close to you because then uh, there's a lot less round trip time between you and the remote server. Okay, that's about it though. Um, it's as simple as that. Make a compute server. With the Lean template, start VS Code by clicking on the VS Code button, change into the fast local directory, use the VS Code terminal to clone anything from GitHub, and then it's just like using VS Code with Lean that you're used to. It's all pre-configured and ready to go. And you can also add an SSH key, push things back to GitHub, and do whatever you want. Okay, thanks a lot. If you have any questions about anything about compute servers, if you want if you think something needs to be added to this image um, or just want to chat with us, email help at cocalc.com. Thank you.